Welcome back to another segment of the best monotype team for every game. Last time, we did the psychic types, and I'm happy to see that Victini worked for you guys actually. This week, however, we take a step off the ground and head into the clouds because the flying type is up. The flying type has always been that one necessary staple for in-game teams, especially earlier on in the series due to Fly being an HM. Flyers were never necessary, of course, but I feel some people would find it rather tedious to have to go back and forth to the PC constantly, switching between a team member and a flyer. In more modern Pokemon titles, the premise of HMs no longer exist, and instead, we have flying taxis now. I will say, there are some pretty underrated and powerful flying type Pokemon in pretty much any gen. With the flying type also being a secondary typing on a good portion of Pokemon, the primary types a lot of flyers carry can really make some pretty diverse teams. Today, I cover some of that diversity with the best flying monotype team for every game. Before that though, like usual, here are some ground rules I have set. These teams will be grouped by a regional basis. Fire Red and Leaf Green will represent Kanto, although these teams can be used for Red, Blue, and Yellow, and Let's Go. Platinum will represent Sinnoh. Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Black and White, and Black and White 2 will be their own separate things. X and Y, Kalos, Oras, Hoenn, Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon, Alola, Sword and Shield, Galar, and then Legends Arceus, Hisui. These teams should still work for Gold, Silver, Crystal, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and sometimes Diamond and Pearl and BDSP. No version exclusive Pokemon unless there is a similar choice in the other version. For example, Mandibuzz and Braviary. No trade evolutions unless Legends Arceus, because of the new mechanic. And no egg moves, etc. All the Pokemon featured on these are also available pre-post game. I will not be providing locations for all Pokemon, but there might be some special cases. I will also not be showing what each Pokemon does well against, nor suggesting movesets. There will be move suggestions, just not full-blown sets for each Pokemon. If I did all that, this video would go on for a pretty long time, which it already does. Like usual, remember to leave what typing you want to see done next down in the comments below. The typing with the most upvotes will be the monotype I cover next. Anywho though, let's begin with Kanto. For Fire Red and Leaf Green, we've got Charizard, Gyarados, Aerodactyl, Dodrio, and Articuno. What I love about Kanto is definitely the aspect of being able to use the legendary birds. Moltres would be on this team, but I feel I would upset a lot of people if it didn't include Charizard, which of course is the starter Pokemon I decided on. Charizard is actually pretty decent for Kanto, as in this go around, Charmeleon gets Flamethrower right before it evolves, therefore decimating Erika. Gyarados I've spoken about plenty of times, and I feel it's one of the best flyers for Kanto, considering its stats. It actually can't fly though, so you're going to be using it for its water attacks. Despite water attacks being special in Gen 3, you can still take advantage of some of the amazing physical attacks it has access to. Dragon Rage is also really solid for the early game. Aerodactyl I'm usually against because it's pretty late game. But regardless of that, it definitely belongs on a team of amazing flyers. Dodrio is a veteran to Kanto best teams, so this shouldn't be surprising. With Tri-Attack being physical here, I couldn't say no. And its stats are also really good. Lastly, we have the two legendary birds of Zapdos and Articuno. Typically, I don't go for legendaries, but considering I've been using them in these monotype team series, I figured, why not? Plus, we're also limited on flying types here. Zapdos, in my opinion, is the best electric type in Fire Red and Leaf Green, solely due to the fact you get it at level 50, and you can capture it literally right after you get Surf. Articuno is usually frowned on in competitive due to Stealth Rocks, but for a Gen 3 in-game run, that doesn't mean squat. Articuno is an amazing ice type, not to mention it already comes equipped with Ice Beam when you capture it. Lance's dragons are definitely going to be taking some L's. This team is stacked though, and I would highly recommend giving this team of flyers a go. Up next for Pokemon Platinum, we have a mixture of some underrated and some powerful choices. With Staraptor, Crobat, Togekiss, Driftblim, Gyarados, and Gliscor. With Staraptor, I'll just save you 30 seconds and say it's one of, if not the best regional birds in the entire series. Close combat, great stats, etc. Plus, very early encounter and not a bad evolutionary level. 
Crobat has been on some best teams in the past, and it brings some pretty unique diversity to the table. Its stats allow it to be very fast while delivering some decently powered flying moves in Poison Stab. The Poison Stab doesn't really do a lot in Sinnoh, but it's not like it doesn't help out at all. Up third is Togekiss. Who doesn't love Togekiss? You can get a Togepi egg really early in the game from Cynthia, and evolving it isn't the biggest pain in the ass. Its learn set and coverage pull is pretty good too, consisting of moves like Aura Sphere, Air Slash, and Flamethrower. With Air Slash and Serene Grace as well, have fun messing with the NPCs. The Shiny Stone can also be found in Iron Island. Driftblem is actually pretty fun to use. Having a ghost type helps with Fantina, its stats are interesting, and the move pull it sports is relatively good. Shadow Ball for Ghost Stab, Fly for Flying Stab, and Psychic plus T-Bolt for coverage. I'm about to sound like a broken record when I talk about this Pokemon. As we all know, it's a superstar. Gyarados, I'll just put it bluntly, will be on pretty much every single team in this video. It's just that good. In Gen 4, however, it starts to get even better, because now it adds access to physical water attacks. One thing I also forgot to mention in Fire Red and Leaf Green was that it evolves at level 20, and you will have to switch it in and out of battles for it to garner enough experience to evolve. And like usual, there's virtually no flying attacks it gets access to, so just stick with the physical water moves and Ice Fang. Dragon Rage also, once again, is great for the early game. Oh yeah, and Intimidate? Solid ability. Lastly is Gliscor. I would consider it the best flying type for Platinum, simply because of its ground typing. What I love about Gliscor 2 is that you can evolve it pretty early in the game. The Razor Fang can be found south of Veilstone City. You can pretty much have Gliscor by the time you get to Maylene. Pokemon Platinum really is great for an earlier game in the series that allows for amazing Pokemon that can evolve pre-post game. It's honestly pretty freaking sad because Heart Gold and Soul Silver should have followed suit. You know, the more I actually talk about Heart Gold and Soul Silver, the more I'm actually starting to pull away from Johto. As I'm sure you all know, no Gliscor or Togekiss in these games. Instead, we're stuck with Fero, Crobat, Jumpluff, Scyther, Gyarados, and Dragonite. I say stuck because, in all honesty, I know the vast majority of you would love to have Togekiss or Gliscor on your team pre-post game without having to trade or use some kind of external source. No disrespect to any of the mons on this team. It's just, come on. Togekiss and Gliscor are so much more appealing. Regardless, these mons still aren't bad. Firo is an excellent flyer with great stats, a fun level upset, and access to the all-powerful stab return. I've talked about it already, so I won't waste too much time. Crobat I've mentioned previously before for Pokemon Platinum, and everything I said there still applies here as well. Jumpluff is next, and if you remember it from the most underrated mons for Gold, Silver, and Crystal, it's still pretty underrated here as well. Great support mon, early availability location-wise and evolution-wise, and it's just better in Gen 4. Next is Gyarados, and the only difference here is you get a shiny one at the Lake of Rage. Scyther, I feel, gets slept on. It makes its return from the Bug-type teams video. Scyther has solid stats, its abilities are great, and its learn set's pretty good too. Wing Attack at level 21, Fury Cutter at level 25, and it's got dope coverage too with Night Slash, which can also be learned via level up. I actually wasn't planning on using Dragonite, due to it being an option only found later in the game. But I think Dragonite is still better here, even as a Dragonair, because the other flying types available? Are, yeah, they're not really all that good. And of course, Dragonite is amazing. I really don't need to talk about it much, other than it evolves at level 55, and it pretty much won't be available until Kanto. But regardless, it's still very good. Plus, the gift one you receive can have extreme speed. I'll say it once again, Heart Gold and Soul Silver and its post-game mons. You really hate to see it. Alrighty, on the Unova now with Pokemon Black and White. This team is going to be limited like usual due to only having access to Gen 5 mons. However, don't underestimate Gen 5's power. On Pheasant, Swanna, Sigilith, Archeops, Braviary slash Mandibuzz, and Tornadus slash Thunderous. First and foremost, Unpheasant is here because we are limited to Flyers, pretty much the same explanation as the normal type teams. Stats wise, it looks great, but with a limited move pull, it just leaves a lot to be desired. Aerial Ace is your best bet for Flying Stab, and for normal, just use Return. 
Swana is fantastic. That water typing is gonna help you out a lot. The coverage it has will also aid you. Next up is Sigilith. Y'all know how much I love this thing. I love its design, it has great stats, and it has a fun learn set and coverage pool. Up next is Archeops, and I'm glad it got chosen as a team member, because it's one of those mons I don't get to talk about that often. Even with Defeatist, that doesn't really mean much for an in-game run, so you can just spam its monstrous physical attack anywhere you want and get results. Archeops is pretty damn dope, and you get it pretty early too. Braviary and Mandibuzz are both solid mons, with Braviary being exclusive to white and Mandibuzz being exclusive to black. They're both decent mons with a good learn set, stats, and alright coverage pulls. More so Braviary than Mandibuzz, but Mandy is still pretty good. Lastly, we got two amazing genies, with Tornadus being in black and Thunderous in white. Thunderous with its electric typing is better in my opinion, but Tornadus is still pretty damn solid. I'll just leave a video with where to obtain them to save some explanation. And yeah, you can get them pre-post game. On to Black and White 2. The team consists of Crobat, Sigilith, Braviary slash Mandibuzz, Swana, Skarmory, and Gliscor. Half the mons are the same as the original Black and White team, so I'll just skip over to Skarmory and Gliscor. Crobat I know I've already mentioned, but I will say I'm glad it gets to be in Black and White too, and also it gets access to Acrobatics at level 33. This improves it by quite a bit here. Gliscor can be obtained I'd say around towards the mid game, and you can nab a shiny stone on Route 6 just a little left of Driftville City from a little girl NPC inside a house. That ground type, like usual, is pretty cool to have. Lastly is Skarmory, and if you've played competitive, you know this thing is a defensive deity. It can be obtained around the mid game as well, and it's got a decent level up pool. On to Pokemon X and Y, and like usual, I will say the Pokemon available in these titles are pretty wide and vast. The team is consisting of Gyarados, Salamence, Aerodactyl, Halucha, Sigilith, and Staraptor. Most of these mons I've mentioned before, but there are three new mons on this team that have some pretty devastating power. Salamence I don't think really needs much of an explanation, but Bagon can be found on Route 8, which is very early for pseudo-legendary standards, especially at this time in the series. Level 50 for an evolution in X and Y with the experience share on isn't all that bad, but I would still say it's worth the wait, and Mence has pretty much great everything so path on using it here. Halucha is a fantastic fighting and flying type, boasting solid speed and all right physical attack. Halucha can set up sword stance, has decent coverage, and with fighting stab, it will help you with a plethora of opponents. The other new mon I wanted to cover isn't necessarily new itself for this vid, but its mega evolution definitely is, being Aerodactyls. Aerodactyl can be found as an old amber by rock smashing rocks in Glittering Cave. You can then take the old amber to the Ambert Town Fossil Lab to revive it. Its Megastone can also be obtained in the Ambert Town Fossil Lab after finding the scientist in Glittering Cave. With those killer stats as a Mega, the ability Tough Claws, and even access to the Elemental Fangs now, it makes Aerodactyl a major destructive foe for Pokemon X and Y. On to Hoenn now, and even though the Eon Flute is available here, these flying mons are still pretty decent. Swallow, Gyarados, Crobat, Skarmory, Altaria, and Tropius. Half the team I mentioned before. Swallow can be found very early in the game, and if you've watched my most underrated team for Hoenn video, you know this thing with guts can be a total powerhouse. I love this regional bird a lot. The next two new mons are Altaria and Tropius. Altaria gets a major upgrade since its debut in Generation 3, as it now gets an incredible Mega Evolution, which you can obtain before the Elite Four. The Mega Stone can be obtained from an NPC in Lily Cove by simply showing him an Altaria. Mega Altaria is amazing with its Dragon and Fairy typing, and it's still to this day one of my favorite Megas. Tropius is slept on in my opinion, and despite its quad weakness to ice, it's still a decent flying type for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Not to mention, it's an all red support mon with not completely horrible stats and a good level up pool. The reason why Salamence isn't on this team is because you can't get big on until the late game. If you could get it earlier, it would of course be here. Welcome to Alola, where we have the likes of Toucanon, Salamence, Crobat, Pelipper, Gyarados, Skarmory, or Mandibuzz slash Braviary. You know, Toucanon is pretty solid, even without its hidden ability. 
skill link, fury attack, and 120 physical attack can really put the dents out there. Most of these other mons I've spoken about before, even in previous team vids. In the water type teams, for instance, I mentioned for Pokemon Sun and Moon having Pelipper with Drizzle to power up my water types. In this scenario, it returns, but only being able to really power up Gyarados. And with the power Gyarados possesses, I can safely say it'll be a solid run. Now, some of you may be asking about Salamence, although there might be some of you that may already know what I am getting at. You can actually SOS for a low-level Salamence in the very beginning of the game by searching for a Bagon. I will leave a video in the description below from Austin John Plays explaining how this process works. Having that Mensto so early in the game is going to make it too easy in my opinion. However, this is the best flying type team for Sun and Moon, so of course the best has to be on it. I also couldn't decide between Skarmory or Mandibuzz slash Braviary, so have your pick. The Ultra Sun and Moon team is pretty much the same, aside from Hawlucha and Honchkrow, which I have already explained in previous entries, but I just wanted to throw a tidbit of information here. I will shortly go over where to find the Dusk Stone. You can't get it until the Pony Wilds, which is late game unfortunately. But I do like the fact that you can use Murkrow earlier in Ultra Sun and Moon. If you do not want to wait, however, you can simply just use two cannon again. And like I said for Sun and Moon, Skill Link, Fury Attack, and 120 Physical Attack will smash things pretty much. Also, Bullet Seed for coverage. I'm also pretty positive the same process for Sun and Moon can also be applied for getting Salamence. I'll leave a video down below though regardless. We now arrive in Galar, where we are greeted with my favorite team for this video. Corviknight, Pelipper, Gyarados, Togekiss, Sigilith, and Hawlucha. Corviknight is pretty incredible, not gonna lie. It has some pretty great defense, and with the power of Body Press, that defense can really be put to use. It's also the regional bird, so it can be found right at the beginning of the games and can also be evolved at a decent time as well. I will also argue that Corviknight is the best regional bird for an in-game playthrough. Once again, the same strat with Gyarados and Pelipper can still be used here too. The shiny stone for Togekiss can be found on Route 8, and of course Sigilith, as usual, is pretty cool too. As far as Galarian Moltres, Articuno, and Zapdos go, if you want to use them, I'll leave a video down below on how to get them. You can replace any of these mons with one of them. As usual, let's go back in time with our time machine, back to Hisui, where we are greeted by Staraptor, Gyarados, Togekiss, Honchkrow, Gliscor, and Hisui in Braviary. All these mons I've mentioned before, they can be obtained at pretty reasonable parts of the game, aside from Hisui and Braviary, who isn't available until Snowpoint Temple. Gligar and Gliscor are also late, but they're both still pretty fun to use regardless. This team will work pretty well against Volo too in my opinion. Well, that wraps up the best flying type teams for every game. This is honestly the most fun I've had making teams for this series, due to all the different flying types with solid primary typings. I mean, Gyarados is known for being a water type, but of course that secondary typing of flying makes it a very viable candidate for these flying type teams. Gyarados is also the MVP of today's video, and it shouldn't be a surprise why. Anywho though, what'd you guys think of these teams? Would you change any up? Let me know down below, as well as let me know what type you want to see covered next. Remember, the type with the most upvotes will be the one I cover next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my content. With Scarlet and Violet DLC on the way, we have a lot to be excited for. Not to stat though, but I've got a bunch of other cool series planned throughout the year that I'm sure you guys will love. If you want to support my other forms of content, over on Mystic Reads, I read fanfics. One of them right now is Road to be a Pokemon Master Kanto Edition, where Ash and Serena start from the very beginning and journey through Kanto together. On Mystic Umbreon Shorts, I do other exclusive Pokemon content such as Pokemon Facts, and on Saturdays, I upload my top 5 favorite Pokemon of a type. Anyway, Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an excellent day.